So this is our eco village. Um, I've been here less than a week um, and I'll probably stay another four months, five months, however long it takes to edit my film. Um, they've invited me here to finish my film in exchange for doing some farm work, which I know a little bit, a bit about. Uh, I've been here less than a week and one of the first things I did was I had to clean the chicken coop. They do that uh, about twice a year. So that was chiseling up all the dried up chicken shit and uh, whatever shavings were left, loading it into a wheelbarrow. Um, and then we kind of, um, I don't know, fumigate is the word, but uh, we sprinkle, I think it's some sort of ash around the corners to keep the mites down. And then we fill it up with shavings again. So these chickens have a, a nice bed to rest in, a roost in, I suppose. So how did I get here? Um, I left Salt Spring at the end of March um, and headed east back to Alberta because it was calving season to film some calves being born. And I arrived in the afternoon, it was beautiful, it was 18 degrees out, and I woke up the next morning and it was minus 10. And it stayed minus 10 the whole day. And uh, I was sitting in a paddock, watching very carefully a pregnant cow waiting for her to calf. And because they're on Susan's farm where they're beef cattle, they're, they don't see humans every day, so they're a little bit more naturally disinclined to let someone with a camera show up and film the birth of their calf. Funny that. Um, so this was a, definitely a, a level up challenge compared to the cows at uh, the dairy farm, which were very, very tame and had no problem with me being there with, the, with my camera. So I learned that I was gonna have to sort of be much further away and sort of sneak in a shot here and there. And it kind of worked. I got what I needed, but it definitely wasn't like watching calving at the dairy farm where I could just be there. So lesson learned. Our eco-village is probably the most sustainable farm that I've been at. They may go out of their way, they have composting toilets, they have a permaculture, a food forest, um, all the things that you think about when you think, oh yeah, that's sustainable farming. But they're also probably the least financially viable. They're a permaculture school among them, so a lot of the revenue of the farm comes from things that aren't selling food. Um, and that allows them to practice farming in a way that wouldn't really work if they were growing food commercially. It would make the, the cost of the food way more than anyone would want to pay. So that's a bit of a lesson is, you know, all this romantic, um, you know, organic, there's chickens, there's cows, there's sheep, um, there's all sorts of vegetables, and it's a hell of a lot of work. Um, and usually there would be school groups here doing all of that work, uh, which is how they managed to do the work and grow the food without needing to pay for all the labor. So that's a balance. And um, I'm trying to grapple with that in my film is the things that we think are environmentally sustainable, well, they cost a lot of money and not everyone wants to pay for that, I guess. So I'll keep thinking about that. I'll leave that thought with you today. Um, so that's what I'm up to. I know it's been a while. Um, if you want to keep following the project, editing is coming along more quickly. I'll start to have things to show, I hope, in a couple months. Um, so you can follow that on the YouTube channel. You can subscribe. You can follow the project uh, more directly by signing up for the newsletter at thehandsthatfeedus.ca. Or you can follow me on Facebook and I usually say Instagram, but I haven't been posting to Instagram. So that's it. YouTube, the website, and Facebook. Follow me there.